As the pandemic's third wave recedes, COVID-19 continues to throw curveballs, not the least of which is long COVID. Now, some researchers are engaged in unprecedented collaboration with the chronic fatigue syndrome community to bring some light to the subject. There's something seriously more dangerous about the COVID virus than was previously thought. Symptoms can linger for months and months. People are experiencing these problems even after recovering from COVID. Not long after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, reports emerged of people battling persistent symptoms after recovering from their initial illness. They became known as long haulers and included people who'd only suffered mild or moderate disease. Long COVID or post-COVID syndrome at its worst can leave those who've cleared the virus suffering from a range of symptoms, including extreme fatigue, insomnia, depression, and something called brain fog. In fact, according to some reports, there are at least 50 different symptoms associated with long COVID. I started getting shortness of breath um, and struggling with chest pain, getting an unbelievable level of fatigue. We were first introduced to Dr. Fader and Gwepi late last year when she appeared in our story on so-called COVID long haulers. Now, she contracted the virus while on the medical front line, but was still battling the symptoms months later. I can't do much. I can't even go to the grocery store to buy my own groceries because I physically can't carry it. Estimates vary, but a British survey found one in 10 people who tested positive for COVID-19 still had symptoms months later. A significant global effort is now underway to try and figure out why. That's encouraging news and not just for those with long COVID. I woke up with a lot of pain, but I took some painkillers, so yeah, I'm ready for action. The past few years have not always been kind to Rita Vivier diagnosed with stage 4 cancer in early 2020. She's also one of around 20 million people worldwide living with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome. She founded South Africa's MECFS Foundation and despite her own challenges, continues to offer valuable advice and support to that community. At its worst, MECFS can leave people bedridden, unable to speak or feed themselves. Its exact cause is unknown, although it often follows viral infections, and it has no established treatments or cure. While Rita has a mild form, a 2017 interview with Carl Planche still offered a glimpse of how life-changing this complex illness can be. Comparing ME tiredness with healthy people's tiredness is like comparing a match to an atom bomb. 13 years since her MECFS diagnosis, Fatigue remains a constant presence. I know I need to rest every three, three and a half hours, four an hour. I know I can't do more than one visit a day. If I go to the shops, I know I can't do something else the rest of the day. Fatigue is a core symptom of MECFS. Another which can follow even light physical or mental activity is called post-exertional malaise, simply referred to as the crash. It's absolutely as if you've died. You, you feel like you're going to die. You have zero energy, feel ill. It's not like I'm tired, I need to go lie down for a bit. No, you absolutely feel completely ill from that crash. From fatigue and sleep trouble to impaired memory, the list of potential MECFS symptoms is varied. But there's a striking similarity to those endured by people with long COVID. So are these similar but distinct conditions, or is there an overlap suggesting something far more significant? An organization in the US believes a large subset of people with long COVID will inevitably be diagnosed with MECFS. Linda, great to meet you. Uh, my name's Derek. Linda Tannenbaum is founder of Open Medicine Foundation, which she established to help fund and facilitate research into MECFS. What were your first thoughts when you heard about uh, long COVID? Since the majority of people develop MECFS from an initial infection, I was really afraid that so many more people would get MECFS after getting COVID. I actually started hearing from more and more people uh, that had post-COVID symptoms uh, that were approaching us and asking, I think I have this disease that you're studying. It's not unusual for symptoms to linger after viral and other infections. This paper mentions 13. 
But the current pandemic is still unfolding and the scale of its post-viral potential isn't fully understood. Tannenbaum is concerned. So we have no idea how many people are really sick with this. It really is like a second pandemic. While a COVID infection has led to symptoms that last for several weeks in a large number of people, MECFS is generally only diagnosed when symptoms persist for longer than six months. This opinion paper conservatively predicts the COVID pandemic will cause the number of people with MECFS to grow by 10 million globally by the end of the year. A disheartening number when you consider that the lives of only about 5% of people with MECFS ever return to normal. And then there will be individuals who various tissues never fully recover. Dr. Ron Tompkins is Chief Medical Officer at Open Medicine Foundation. And it can be in your lungs, heart, central nervous system, your brain, but some tissues just simply fail to return to normal. And that remains a mystery. Totally a mystery. Mystery is a word often associated with MECFS, not least because the disease still lacks a standard, reliable diagnostic test. One of the terrible conundrums in MECFS is the fact you have these ter terrible symptoms, yet all the tests that the typical clinician would do return normal, yet the patients continue to suffer from this terrible fatigue and inability to function. Relying on symptoms alone to make a diagnosis means MECFS was and often still is seen as an imagined disease. The seriousness of MECFS is grossly underplayed, underrecognized. I found in the United States that many of our institutionals have a bias uh, that is in total denial of this disease. For Tompkins and like-minded researchers, it's imperative people with long COVID don't encounter similar indifference, especially those whose symptoms suggest MECFS. The government agencies really need to take MECFS seriously. It's not a fraud. It's not an imaginary disease. It's a real disease. And uh, it's pretty much lifelong. Dr. Ron Davis, who also featured in our 2017 story, knows that all too well. His son, Whitney Defoe, has a severe form of the disease and requires constant care. A renowned geneticist, Dr. Davis has been single-minded in trying to help his son and others like him. I believe this disease is curable because patients do get over this. It's rare, but they do get over it. And when they do get over it, they're totally normal. They don't have any of the uh, of the symptoms at all. If they can spontaneously get over it, we should be able to do something that pushes them in that direction. But he too worries past mistakes in dealing with MECFS will be repeated during and after this pandemic. One of the most controversial was a study that found patients benefited from exercise and psychological therapy, something Dr. Davis and other MECFS activists strongly reject. And with the US Congress alone making more than a billion dollars available over four years to study long COVID, a good way of avoiding those mistakes is leaning on the MECFS research community. It would be really good to have some joint effort. And it would be really good if the long hauler funding actually funded MECFS because there's a long history of, of, of work there that the community would benefit from instead of starting from scratch. We're insisting our government includes MECFS in the post-COVID research agenda because there is a lot of money on the table to study post-COVID syndrome. This is so important. And basically, if not now, when? Now is our chance to really scale up the research. For many years, people living with MECFS have had to battle against a tide of uh, skepticism, even indifference towards a disease that has dramatically changed their lives. And it's taken a pandemic to give them renewed hope for a diagnostic test, viable treatments, and possibly even a cure. The irony isn't lost on Rita Vivere, but far from bitter, she's more determined than ever to fight her community's cause. The moment we started seeing that there was a problem after a few months with COVID patients, 
just came to the party and started advocating, educating the world, the patients, the doctors, and saying, please, people, listen to your bodies. We have the knowledge. We have learned the hard way. Instead of being bitter that we didn't get that attention, we said, no, let's help you guys. You are our brothers and sisters in this. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.